So this question comes from Blaine in Ms. Wright's class. What got you inspired to be a space engineer? Um, when I was younger, uh, I always watched uh, videos of space shuttle launches uh, where there's humongous rockets launching to space, delivering people, delivering spacecrafts, and doing really exciting sciences. Uh, so I thought it was really cool and I wanted to be a part of it. Um, so when I went to high school, I studied math and physics uh, so that uh, one day I can be an engineer. Uh, nowadays, uh, people are doing exciting missions like going to an asteroid or going to Jupiter, uh, moons of Jupiter, to find uh, whether there is life outside of the Earth. Uh, basically aliens. Uh, so uh, that's what really gets me excited to be a space engineer. So this question comes from Caleb in Miss Madden's class. How are planets made? So in the beginning, when the solar system was just starting to form, first the sun formed from all of the various gases and things around. And so that made all everything that was around very hot. So there was a lot of dust that was swirling around and the heat and the gravity interactions actually made those dust particles start to combine together and they'd make slightly larger dust particles and then eventually when enough of them combine together they'd make rocks or asteroids and then more would combine and eventually you end up with a planetesimal and when more of those start getting pulled together by gravity then they combine and they make a planet. And as the, the planets orbit around the sun, they pick up more and more of this dust and clear out all the different areas. So that's why there's an asteroid belt from where the gravity of Jupiter and the gravity of the inner planets and the sun prevented those asteroids in the asteroid belt from forming another planet. This question comes from Jaden in Ms. Daffin's class and Jazzle in Ms. Laura's class. How does the Earth orbit around the Sun? So, uh, in our solar system, the Sun is the most massive object, which uh, applies gravity to, to all its like neighbor planets. So, as a result, the Sun tries to pull the Earth towards itself, but at the same time, because the Earth is orbiting around the Sun, um, which gives another type of force that prevents it from falling off to the Sun. So there's like two different forces balancing, just like you can see when you rotate a ring like this. It doesn't fall into my hand, it doesn't like go away from my hand, because there are two forces that are there can be balanced. This question is from Zayani from Ms. Mattern's class. How do you build a robot? In order to build a robot, you need several things. First of all, you need a motor in order to activate the wheels. So you can move like that. You also need to make your robot see because otherwise it will just bump into objects. So you need sensors. You also need a brain, which is a basically computer. And you need to test your robot. So you need to turn it on and see how it works. This question is from Malik in Ms. Laura's class. How do you make satellites move? So satellites uh, move essentially uh, due to the same reason that the Earth moves around the sun. Uh, that's because of the gravitational force uh, between the satellite and the Earth. But uh, apart from this, if we wanted to make the satellites move uh, independently, on their own, we could use uh, these things called um, uh, uh, thrusters, uh, which you saw in, in the demo earlier, I think. Uh, and these can be used, and uh, these work due to uh, kind of the laws of motion, where uh, every action has an equal and opposite um, reaction. So, for example, if you throw a stone or a rock uh, with a certain amount of force, uh, you would experience the same force on yourself. And uh, it's based on this uh, principle uh, the thrusters also move the satellite.
question comes from Kader in his Matterns class. Can you build a robot dragon? Yes, Kader, you really can. Um, we took about five minutes and put one together for you. This is our robot dragon. It's based off of a Hungarian horn tail from Harry Potter. Uh, it's got a lovely tail action where it can beat its components with its tail if they can miss its fiery breath. So, <laughs> you can do a lot with robotics. So this question comes from Isabella in Miss Mattern's class. What's your favorite chemical? Hi Isabella, my favorite chemical is hydrogen. Uh, in the sun, these hydrogen reactions go off and creates energy for our solar system. These reactions are called nuclear fusion reactions and it's when the nuclei of hydrogen fuse and uh, give off energy. Then the sun gives off light and then the light reaches us and then we use that light for everything. This question is from Justin in Ms. Lore's class. Are there any robots that swim? I would use mine to catch lots of really big fish. Right, so uh, if you define a robot as uh, any system that just goes on its own, then the, yeah, there are a lot of robots that are swift. So if you consider a boat or a ship as not operated by a human, but rather as sort of a computer program to, to run it, then that would be your robotic ship. And essentially, if you want to catch a fish with it, you just have to design, uh, you know, like a, fishermen robots on top of a robot, robot ship that catch fish for you and there are also lots of robots that goes on the water like there are ones that's uh, like a snake or a fish there are research uh, ongoing research on the on these areas as well this question is from Aiden in this Matterns class uh, how much does a quadrator cost after you're done making the changes you need to so if you take a little quadrator like this guy this costs around $200, and we actually don't need to make any changes to it, any costly changes to it to use it for our work. But the trick is we use, uh, we use about 30 of these in one go, so we have about 200 of them. So the cost can get quite expensive in other ways. For our big quad order that you saw in the earlier lab demo, that costs around $30,000. So they're very expensive. <laughs> Question is from Glory in Miss Wright's class. If you could buy anything new for your lab that you don't already have, what would it be? What would be really awesome to have in the lab would be a big 3D printer. A 3D printer that can print plastics, carbon fiber, metals, everything you can imagine, every material you can imagine at full scale. So imagine this asteroid next to me. If we could just print all of it in one piece, that would be so much easier and it would uh, help us so much in the lab. This is from Picado in this Daphne's class. How big is space? So this is a tricky question because space is actually infinitely big, but it's also expanding. So it's getting bigger, but it's already infinitely big. The easiest way to think about this is if you think about raisin bread when you're making the dough for it, and you have all these raisins inside the dough. When you leave the dough there so that it rises, the raisins get further apart. So the way we know that the, that the universe is expanding is we can see other galaxies moving further away from us, like raisins in the raisin bread. We'd see raisins moving further away as the dough expands. Okay, this question is from Julian in Miss Daffin's class. What basic materials do you need to build your own quadcopter? How do you change the ones out of the box? So the components you need to build a quadcopter, first and foremost is the, the airframe, which is a structure that holds all the components. You would need motors, minimum four, four propellers, four speed controllers that drive the motors. You would need a flight controller to control the aircraft. You would need a battery. And you would need other sensors like GPS if you want to do some level of autonomy, maybe a camera so you can see where you're going and LiDAR, which is a laser that allows the aircraft to see its position, maybe from the ground or objects in front of you. 